just me and the cat left. All the dogs have been, have taken them to all of their places and I have like 15 minutes before I got to go. So I'm getting a ride from a friend, Bruce. Bruce is taking care of Lenny. Bruce is Arrow's dad. Arrow was the little dog that I was looking after. And yeah, so <sighs> Whew, it's been unbelievable how much work it's been to get organized to leave. I tell you, holy moly. But um, here it goes. Steve left for the boat about a month before me. And in the weeks prior to me leaving to meet him, I was filled with both excitement and sadness. Excited for the obvious. This will be a trip of a lifetime. But sad to leave all of the things behind that I love, saying goodbye to all of my hobbies, my projects, and of course, all of the pets. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Did you guys have a good sleep together? Hi, right, Brent. It's the last day. Mommy flies out today. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Sad day. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> you gonna sit on me? Mm -hmm. house you guys in your new house your food <laughs> come here this is where you're staying for a month this is where you're staying for a month it's nice got a yard fenced yard trampoline you can jump on just in case. Hey, Lenny. You doing okay, eh, Buzz? Yeah. He's a happy dog. it's only going to be about a month but it's just the way that I am. I said goodbye to my elaborate excursions finding Clyde in the forest and to be honest I needed a little break after his last one which was a couple of nights before I left. Clyde appeared to be lost. He was about two miles from home in the middle of nowhere at a standstill for hours according to his GPS. So I set out on foot with Riley in tow to see what was going on. I became incredibly anxious finding out that he was literally right by the raging creek. He's right there. And I had to find a way to cross the creek to get to him. Oh my god, Clyde. Clyde. This one's not funny. This one's not funny. I thought you were dead. How are we gonna get out of here? I know. You did it. I'm sweating. Heidi. There. And then hike over two miles back home in a different way bushwhacking the whole way up and from start to finish this excursion took me about three and a half hours. It was definitely one of the hardest and toughest Clyde Bear rescues of all. 
Good morning, Clyde. We were up in the night getting drinks. It was thirsty. Every second is worth it knowing he's sleeping in his bed at night. Hey, baby. We're a little tired today, though, aren't we? Aren't we? For those of you who are new here or just don't know what this is all about, here's a very quick backstory. Having grown up in Nova Scotia, Steve loves the ocean and his heart and soul thrive on the sea. He sold his last sailboat of 23 years back in 2018 to fulfill a lifelong dream of being like Jacques Cousteau in the Calypso. So he decided to get the boat of his dreams. In 2019, he signed a contract and we customized our very own Diesel Duck 462. It would take nearly four years for the boat to be complete, and here we are today. The overall plan is to get the boat from China back to the coast of British Columbia, Canada. Welcome to phase one. Steve spent about a month in mainland China getting things finalized to have the boat shipped to Hong Kong, where we would stay and do the extra finalization before leaving port. Hong Kong. Just arrived in Hong Kong. We're having a um, latte. latte. And then we're going to take the you gotta take the subway. Subway? Going down to the southern part of Hong Kong. That's where the boat is. And uh, yeah, it's about a half hour in line. Which sounds interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Series of trains and subways, and here we are. So the mast, you can see the mast over there. We have to take a little boat. Hang on to this, Michelle. Okay, okay, 
You have it? Hang yep. on to this there. Okay. So we had to climb on this person's boat yeah. <laughs> to get to the, our boat. I arrived on May 20th, and from the moment I got here, we've been picking away every day at the long list of things needed to be done before departure. There we go. Here in Hong Kong, we are waterlocked, meaning that we have no access to land, other than yelling for sampans and literally paying out the yin yang for them. But each day has been spent ashore, walking around everywhere, getting many subway trains, gathering a ton of different items, looking for different rigging parts, you know, getting pots, pans, plates, cutlery, different houseware items. I wash everything. Getting paper charts, organizing sea trials for the Simrad navigation system and calibrating the autopilot. We're going out at sea today. We're doing some sea trials with the, it's called Onboard Marine Group and they are gonna test all of the navigation systems and the autopilot to make sure that everything is in line and calibrated right. So I'm just kind of preparing the boat for the sea, which means anything that moves needs to come off the counters. So I'll put the toaster away and just anything, yeah, things, I don't know how this boat, I know on our sailboat, um, you know, things would fly all over the place. So I just kind of take everything down. So I'm just kind of going around preparing the boat for that. That's the bow thruster. Yeah, I hear that. I just turned on the exhaust fan. Okay, the engine. engine room. Okay. Yeah, turn, turn to start it, and then do what, aim for a. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah. So we aim to keep the rate of turn at okay. two, two, yeah. two to three degrees a second. Uh, no, no, we don't need that one. Trying to get his dive compressor going. So it's going now. It was going, it was just not uh, holding air. It is now. Uh. 
sourcing out propane for the stove. Today is worth celebrating because we get the propane tanks. They're like tiny little, tiny little 4.7 pound tanks. We have two of them, so we have about 10 pounds of propane. And we got a spare hydraulic pump for the, for the steering, so that's good. Yeah, but we weren't sure if we were going to get that propane, so that was yeah. good. Um, expensive, like 300 bucks for those tanks and you get the money back if you return them, but of course we're not going to return them, so they'll have to be souvenirs of some sort. You'll have to take them home for your cabin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sourcing out the massive amount of fuel that will be required for the boat and trying to come up with an actual crew for the first part of this journey. Oh, good. I'm just wondering, like, would you be able, I'm just, uh, I have no experience in this part of the world, Ken, and that's why I'm looking for somebody who has uh, ship's captain ex experience to help me take the boat to Japan. Every little thing has been challenging. You'd be surprised how hard it is to find and get things here. Just trying to find the stores has been incredibly hard. And then after you found the store, half the time they don't have the part or the thing you needed anyway. Okay, one of the hardest things is trying to find the stores from the street. This one was the worst and the funniest. So we're in store, we can buy a few things. Oars is what we came here for, boat oars. But we'll show you how we got up here. <laughs> we're going down the exact way we came up just because the elevator didn't take us to the right floor. But there's like, okay, the hell. Okay. Is this right? Yeah. Yeah, we came through here. How do they make money? I know how do people know? It's well, I mean, I guess this is the best equipped store, but hard to get into it. They have to have a special code to get, even get in off the street. How are you supposed but to know what no the sign. code is? There's no signs to the stores. It's like just crazy. Um, no four. Yeah, it said to go to number four, floor number four. There's not even a number four. <laughs> no signs anywhere but what this is you had to have a special code we had to call the store like no signs at all that's just typical I guess being in a foreign country it's all part of the journey we're getting there slowly but surely things are coming together I suppose one of the biggest things to mention is the weather. I guess I was wondering, like, probably leave as soon as the typhoon is gone. I think that would be okay. Oh, typhoon. Yeah, like, like... It's free and, it's out. and the fact that there has been a hurricane out on the sea, so of course we have had to wait for that and its aftermath to pass. So at this point in time, most of what is needed to be done is done. 
We are waiting for the right weather window and then we will be off. Just catching up on my origami skills because we're going to Japan, baby. Thank you.